Hello and welcome to this episode of Trash to Track. Now, I don't usually do a commentary while I'm actually working. I'll just move the camera up slightly. While I'm working on the models, because I've usually got the radio on or something in the background, but I wanted to show you this, what we've got today. Now, this has been sent in by Steve. And as you can see, it's a class 20. Now, Steve contacted me and said, um, I've got a class 20 I bought. It was damaged in the post. Is there any way you can help repair it? So I had a look at it and I thought, yes, I'll have a go. Now, it could be I might have bitten off more than I can chew. So let's have a look at the uh, state of this locomotive. And uh, it's the first for Trash to Track. It's the first O-Gage loco I've ever worked on. And there it is. <laughs> when he says it was damaged in the post he wasn't kidding now i'm in i'm in no uh under no illusion of how difficult this may be and it's probably going to be one of the hardest restores i've ever had to do the model the kit is completely in pieces and it's made up of a mixture of resin, brass and white metal parts. So it may bulk at some people, um, it may annoy them what I'm going to do, but I'm going to actually reassemble this with some two-part epoxy resin. Now I know that there'll be people saying, oh, you, you should solder it, you should solder it. But I don't want to ruin the resin parts. I've never soldered white metal before. And to be perfectly honest, the new sort of um, two-part epoxy resins you can buy are absolutely superb. Now I'm going to be using the Gorilla Glue Black Gorilla. I can't say it. Gorilla Glue brand. There we go. That's what I'll be using. But this 20 really has suffered. There's the motor. Um, there's two axles, uh, two wheels off the axles there, and one of the frames. You can see these are all resin. I've got no idea what make of kit this is. So if anybody knows, do let me know and I'll amend the title. Now there is the chassis, which is brass. The details have obviously been broken off. Now you can see that this, I believe, was glued together originally because there's no solder joints on there. And there's cab. That cab looks a bit... Oh, you know why? That cab in there is made up of sponge. <laughs> I've never seen that before, but that's made up of sponge. That's quite cool. Sprung buffers. Um, windscreen wipers bent. I mean, this is going to be one hell of a project. So I'm going to cut that off now. Get out all the parts and we'll have a look exactly what we're dealing with. Right, those are all the pieces in the box. So it's going to be relatively easy to find where these big pieces go. I mean, there's the bonnet doors for that side and the bonnet doors for the opposite side. So at least they are all present. So at least I could put that up there. There's the cab roof. So that's present as well. There is one of the driver figures who's in a standing position. The other driver figure still has the rear of the sponge seat attached to his backside. And there is his arm. So we'll have to mend him up. There's the soul bar that's broken off with the battery box, the bogey frame, the two missing wheels. There is a ladder, but I don't know where that's going on. That is plastic. Um, there's a plastic card piece, which I believe is a bogey mount. There's, and then there's all these, little, there's two great screws. There is a, that is a sandbox off one of the bogies. Don't know what that is. Don't know what that is. Air pipes, vacuum pipes, no idea what that is. A tiny, tiny little nut. Another one of those plastic card parts. Another nut. And these two pieces. Now I've got no idea. But I've got no instructions. I am flying blind with this. But I said to Steve I'd give it a go. And that's what I'm going to do. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just get this Tamiya pot of paint, sit the bogey on it, and using a battery, I'm going to put 
power to the motor terminals to make sure that it works because if the motor's dead oh there is there was some form of life there it's not anymore i mean that's come off from somewhere let me just oh it's locked up that's why now this might not turn very well because something's locking that up but if i do it the other way there we go very noisy but at least it works and the motor hasn't been smashed in the post yeah that way it's locking up it's pushing the because there's no wheel on that side it's pushing it out of alignment so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to go back to my normal uh you know film it and do a voiceover but i just thought i'd narrate the the first bit i mean everything is bent up everything this has been properly properly bashed about it's d8012 or 20012 in old money and uh, the only dangerous thing is oh i noticed that that's that's just come off there that's been magnetized out ah so one of those bolts is for the buffers so that's at least that's sort of that the danger of this is i'm going to want an o gauge 20 when i've done this um steve i did mention the paint job to steve and he said he wasn't too fussed about it but i'll see what i can do obviously i don't want to go too far all the head code discs are in place it looks pretty good to be fair so right we'll crack on the first thing i'm going to do i think is i'm going to oops, i'm going to service this motor and reassemble this bogey um that's where that snapped off from there like that has snapped off from there maybe yeah you can see the white you can see the white lines there but that's not oh, we're gonna have to figure it out as we go along i think but yeah so i'll cut over now to me doing a voiceover and we will try and reassemble this jigsaw of an ee type one Right, so as I said, we're going to start with the motor bogey. And uh, there's a wire come off the solder tab there. There's all-wheel pickup on this model. Uh, the pickups are made from phosphor bronze strip that has been bent into shape and soldered. And the motor is uh, kept in place by this housing on the top here, which is removable uh, by these small self-tapping screws. Once these have been removed, the top lifts off. And... Uh, there's a wire glued to it there but that allows me to remove this big motor and i'm just going to give it a once over make sure there's no fluff and build up of dirt which there isn't there's no there's no grease or oil on this whatsoever and uh just testing the motor terminals there it seems to run all right uh it is a little bit noisy but then again i don't know the last time this was run so i'm going to give it a quick dust off there get all that them dust bunnies on off it dust out the bogey frame and I put the motor back where it came from and then re-secure it using that uh, white metal retainer that screws into the resin. Just making sure there that the gears are all meshing correctly with the worms on the motor. And then these four screws are replaced. So I'm just checking. Make sure it's sat in there correctly. I wouldn't want to try and screw this down if the motor wasn't seated right. Otherwise you could end up bending the white metal out of shape. So you'll also notice on the start of this video that I said this was day one. I've split this video up into the days it took me to do it. The two-part epoxy resin, although it sets in five minutes, which is true, it will hold in five minutes, but it's still very tacky and soft. So I did leave it the recommended 24 hours. So I did a little bit each day, let it set for 24 hours, just so that I wasn't undoing the work as I was going along. Now I'm just cleaning up the pickups there. These were quite dirty, these ones without the wheels on. So I cleaned the motor, uh, the wheel bearings with a cotton bud and mess. I cleaned the pickups uh, using the fiberglass pencil and a cotton bud and I'm now just cleaning these wheels. Now these wheels have got uh, plastic inserts and unfortunately both of these have started to crack very, very slightly and have expanded, which explains why they've fallen off the axle. So these will be cleaned um, as I'm doing now with a fiberglass pencil polishing the wheel treads up and they will be very very carefully reattached to the axle using two-part epoxy resin 
So this was quite a fiddly task. Now you only have five minutes, like I say, to work with this. So I mixed up the resin, put a smear on the inside face of that plastic inner wheel, put it on the axle, pushed it down to make sure it was connected correctly, and then measured the back-to-backs with my digital calipers to make sure that uh, the gauge was correct. Now using these needle nose pliers, I'm just bending that bogey frame out there because it had been bent inwards and uh, it was actually fouling the wheel. And you'll notice that I do many, many test fits with this. I didn't want to, to get it wrong. So now we've gone over to day number two. That was uh, enough for day one. So this is the second day of working on this 20. And this was the day I had been and I'd got some new, uh, new packet of glue. And I was just cleaning the wheels on the opposite side now of the bogey to the one that we worked on previous. And once I'm satisfied that all the dirt and fluff has been removed, and what I'm doing there is I'm just pinching the end of that cotton bud so, so it fits down uh, behind those wheels. But once I'm convinced and satisfied that all the dirt has been removed, I am going to then glue those wheels back to the axles. Now here's the Gorilla Glue, the epoxy stuff. It decants out um, in equal measures. Although this was the really older stuff and it was going a little bit stiff. But you it decant it out in equal measures. I mix it together using a cocktail stick until you have mixed it thoroughly. And then the five minute countdown begins. Now what it does say on the packet and worth noting is the bond will be stronger the quicker you use it. So if you use it after four minutes, the bond will not be as strong as it does when it's freshly mixed. But as you can see here, I'm just putting some resin on the inside of that plastic wheel face. This was then pushed onto the axle, making sure that it goes correctly all the way home. And then once both were done, I then uh, made sure the wheel back-to-backs were correct with the calipers. And also why we had the, uh, we had the glue mixed up. Here goes the second wheel, and the excess is wiped off. There we go. But also, while we had that epoxy mixed up, I'm going to put some on the side of the bogey and reattach the bogey frame. So here's the broken off bogey frame. Just going to give it a quick dust off there because it was re relatively dusty. A big dollop of the glue on the back of the frame there, where you, I can clearly see that the previous glue had left the mark make sure that the bogey frame is not upside down and then marry it up to the uh, part on the resin now there was a groove in that resin so i'm just going to put some of this resin in there um and then i'm going to spread a little bit down here just to make sure that that bond is is very good and secure i'm just bending the white metal bogey frame so they're straight because they were again these were bent inwards and then the bogey frame is pressed home and then held for the five minutes for the epoxy glue to set and adjust it if necessary so that the axle boxes line up with the ends of the actual axles. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of me holding things in this video, holding things for the glue to set. But with this five minute epoxy stuff, because it's not instant, you can adjust things like this to make sure that everything is in alignment and everything is where it should be. So that's that bogey frame and those two wheels uh, back on where they should be. I'm just, like I said, I'm just now going to have to hold this. And then I'm just going to put a little bit across there. This will just add as a bit of a reinforcing joint so that uh, this doesn't come off easily in the future. Right, so I've mixed uh, that up. That's the bogey in the back there on its end is curing. And I'm now going to turn my attention to the bonnet. Now these bonnet doors are still attached, although they are coming off at this end. So I now have some more um, glue mix. This is another fresh batch. And I'm again using cocktail sticks to apply it. I'm going to apply a thin layer onto the resin. Put the bonnet doors in place. These are white metal and they bend very, very easily. Put that in place and hold it with one hand without getting glue on my fingers and then i'm going to reinforce the bond from the inside 
Again, cocktail stick, applying this epoxy resin stuff. And there's a little dedication in there on the resin. Trash to track episode 92. So if anybody opens this kit up in the future, they'll be able to see that it was mended by my own fair hand. So these bonnet doors here needed bended back into shape. These again, like they've been damaged in the box. A few kinks in them. So these are all straightened out. And once I was satisfied that they were as straight as I was going to get them, they were test fit onto the bonnet. And you can see to the left there, I've cut two long black plasticard strips. These are going to help retain this in position from the inside. So I do two or three test fits to make sure it's all level and I'm still adjusting the, the doors there. But once I'm happy, again, a new batch of glue is mixed. And using a cocktail stick again, which is a common method through this rebuild, I put some on this tab, just enough to put a slight coating on it. I mean, it looks relatively thick on camera, but in reality, it was a thinnish coat. I put some along the base of the doors as well. And then the bonnet doors were put onto the nose, lined up correctly, making sure they didn't move. And then on the inside, because it's only held on by that tab that goes onto the roof, I'm going to reinforce the tabs as I did with the first lot of doors by putting a big dollop of the resin on the inside and over those tabs. And then I put some resin on the sides and glue those two black, uh, black plasticard strips in place. And these were clamped in place just so that those two bonnet side doors are together. They are connected and it just adds a bit of strength because there was nothing holding these two together really. So once they're on, I use these plastic clamps. There we go, that's the first one. And then the second one's on now. And I'm going to squeeze in a couple more clamps. And you have to work carefully with this. You don't want to get those clamps on any glue that might have squeegeed out. Otherwise you're going to end up gluing your clamps to your model so now that was all done that was all set aside to dry for 24 hours and we're on to the third day of the rebuild now now on day three off camera i actually put another set of bonnet side doors on and you can see the ones we fitted on day two are now glued solid the glue has thoroughly cured and i've put the front doors on there on this side so they're still slightly tacky as they've only been done a few minutes and this leaves the last lot of doors to go on these were quite dusty so again these were dusted down and the same method has been followed from the previous day a couple of test fits now interestingly this side there is that uh, strengthening piece there which was missing on the other side so i'm going to use that instead of plastic card strips and I'm going to use that to hold it in place. Now, again, another fresh batch of glue has been mixed up. The bonnet doors there are very, very carefully held in place. And again, reinforced from the inside using a cocktail stick and some freshly mixed epoxy resin. So I go along there, all the way along on the inside. Nobody's going to see this in here, so it does give me a bit of a leeway to be quite messy with this glue. Although I'm not, I'm not too messy. I do like to keep it a little bit tidy. But it's all along the base there, along the roof line. And I also put some up that door seam. Because not only is this epoxy resin good for gluing, it's also a gap filler. So it will fill any gaps and holes and not allow the daylight through. And it is easily painted once it's done. So final adjustments to that last set of bonnet nose doors. Making sure that everything is flush with the roof detail and in alignment. And once I'm happy, I'm going to set that aside. Again, just adjusting it there. But now that's set aside, I'm going to turn my attention to the cab and chassis section. Now, this has got a cutout in the chassis. The sole bars are broken. One of them's broken off completely. And this has had a bit of a dent in that window there. So I'm going to try and straighten that out. Although it didn't straighten out very well. I didn't want to ruin the white metal, so I just put a pair of pliers in there just to open it up a bit and make the window a bit more square. And as I did it, the plastic card inside, which is clear, 
and represents the windows flung off, so I'll reattach that with some glue. The window screen wiper that was bent was straightened up. And then I'm going to turn my attention to these uh, buffers. Now, I found out what this piece was, these two pieces. They actually go on the back of the sprung buffers. So I'm going to reattach the sprung buffers that have worked loose and fallen off when this model uh, self-destructed. But there was quite a lot of flash on these white metal parts, so I uh, cleaned that off with a file. Before attaching it to the buffer, just remove that little nut there. I put the buffer through the buffer shank housing and put that collar piece on followed by the nut. And that secures the spring buffers in place. When I uh, come to it later, I do actually put a tiny bit of epoxy resin on the ends of these buffers on the inside, which will stop the nut working loose in the future. It is quite fiddly trying to do this. It's uh, There we go. I've got it now, but it does take a while to get that thread to engage on that small nut. And you don't want to tighten it up too much, otherwise you end up pulling the buffer in on the springing. And uh, it loses the whole sprung buffer effect. But that's them two done. And now I am going to um, glue the sole bars back on. So using a cocktail stick again, I just run some glue inside there. Clamp the brass chassis to the white metal sole bars. Wipe off any excess glue. And there's... I'm going to clamp that together. And like I said before, th these do take 24 hours to dry, so it is a long, slow process doing this. So that's one side clamped, and here's the other missing piece of sole bar. That goes on there like that. And again, this has already been glued, and this will be clamped in place. And hopefully it will keep that brass chassis section nice and true now. I'll get the clips on this uh, clamp have gone a bit... Funny, so I line them back up again and then clamp the battery box like so. So I'm going to add a few more clamps just to make sure nothing moves and everything stays as it should. And uh, I'll set that aside as well and I'll come back to that um, tomorrow. But as you, I'm just reinforcing all the, the joints here along the inside with some more epoxy resin around the battery boxes and and around everything. And then once that was spread out, it was set aside, as I said. And now we're on to day four, and we are cracking on with this now. It's not been as difficult a rebuild as I initially thought it would be. But you can see there that it's starting to look like a 20. So the sole bars have glued properly. The nose, um, bonnet, doors, and roof are all glued together. So now it's time to start working on the crew. So a tiny bit of epoxy resin on that pin will allow driver Stanley here to have his arm back. And then I found that this Gorilla epoxy resin did not melt the sponge. So I was able to glue this driver back in place, just putting him in the cab there, very carefully placing his feet and that seat back to exactly where they should be. And he is back in place. And then the other driver was also glued in. Now he was glued in facing the other desk, um, I could see the foot marks on the floor, so I just glued them back where they were originally. It was easier than trying to move them around the cab. So, there them two are. They'll be thoroughly dry in 24 hours. So, we're going to turn our attention back to the bogies now, and I'm going to glue this sandbox, or attempt to glue this sandbox back to the bogey. Now, there is no tab. It's a clean break, but it's on a break that's very thin. So using some of this um, epoxy resin glue, I leave it to harden slightly and then use it. Um, that way it will be an instant grab for the sandbox. Right, the bogey's now glued together. After 10 to 5 minutes set my ass, it was 10 minutes. And I'm obviously talking live again. because <laughs> So I glued these plastic card bits back on. Now they're not level, but they've gone back in the glue marks to make the... I don't know what that's, that paint's come off there, but that's all solid. So that's the drive bogey done. I've just got to solder that on. The parts list, I'll move the camera up slightly. 
this is all that's whoops my elbow this is all that's left of the parts left to fit now i don't think this is part of it because there's no break in the handrails on the bonnet of the 20 where the hand where the ladder would go we've got a vacuum pipe and air pipe these two huge screws that i don't think are part of it these i think are washers for those screws but i can't for the life of me think where they go at the moment and the cab roof which i'm going to put on after i finish i'm going to detail paint that up a bit more in that cab where the sponge is but one thing i, one thing I wanted to show you or two things actually as the lid on my satin varnish wouldn't shut properly um because i'd used it to stick something and i pulled out that from the lid look a perfect ring of old varnish that i'd when i uh I'd wiped it on there, it all ran there, look, and it stopped the lid pushing fully home. Look at that, that's like a, you'd use that as a rubber washer. And more seriously, <laughs> I've set the chassis down on those, on my two batteries, look, that, uh, that I use for trash to track. But the epoxy resin wasn't quite set, so if I lift it up, <laughs> there's a battery uh glued to the other side of this look it's oh it's come off oh it's come off and it's, oh, thank god for that i thought i was gonna have to break the glue bond but uh yeah so that was on there i just thought it was rather funny but we're getting there now it's not far off becoming complete that's bent that handrail at the front and we've got the buffer beams to sort out these snap fasteners, they, there's one missing. That bit of plastic card sits on there with a snap fastener on the other side. Both are complete on the bogies. There's one there, look, and there's one there. And these bogies clip together. So they are electrically complete like that. So they clip together. I need the snap fasteners, which I've ordered off Amazon because I have some in the garage, but cannot for the life of me find them now. I actually need them. The bonnet is about ready to be glued on, but I can't glue that on until I've done that snap fastener and the cab roof. And then I'm going to touch the paintwork up and I've also got to dust this bogey. So we're getting there. We're nearly done something. I, I didn't think we would be able to do this, but we are getting there. Right, day five, and Amazon have delivered the snap fasteners that I need to put the bogies back on. So I'm going to open them up, and I'm going to use the 11 mil mil ones here. I'm just going to solder this wire on, as that's been bugging me for the past few days. So that's just a very, very two-second job, just touching that solder joint back on. And then I'm going to electrically connect both of the bogies and then give them an electrical test to make sure that all the pickups on all the wheels are working. So using this Tamiya pot again, I'm going to jack up the power bogey and then using the battery leads, I'm going to test each individual pickup. And as you can see, the motor's running fine, which means the electrical connection between the two bogies is good. Some of the pickups did need adjusting and cleaning as not all of them were transmitting power. So these are all done using my tweezer nose pliers. But as you can see there, they are working nicely. And this end, not so much. So they needed adjusting. The new snap fastener, the original one was snap, uh, replaced off the bogey tower on the dummy bogey. The new one was temporarily tacked in place with some Loctite super glue. And then when this had gone hard, I gave it a proper gluing with some two part epoxy resin. Now the Gorilla Glue does come with a tool, a um, like a spatula type tool. And I did use this to make sure that the epoxy was flat and flush to the top of that snap fastener on the bogey. So I'm just putting it on here with the cocktail stick. <clears throat> and then I will be adjusting the glue with that spatula type tool. As you can see on the chassis, it's upside down. 
and I'm going to put some epoxy resin on the plastic card retainer piece to make sure that it's held in place as strongly as possible and I've uh, just sped this footage up here of me gluing this in place and then again using the spatula tool I'm going to put some epoxy on the top here to hold it in place very firmly and then wiping away any excess with the spatula and then again it was left for 24 hours to set Yeah, this tool is uh, is quite handy, and this comes with those Gorilla Glue um, resins. It's in between the handle; you have to snap it out. So once that's done, and I'm satisfied that the epoxy resin is level and below below the lip of the fastener, I will leave that to thoroughly dry. The um, this is the trailing bogey. Just adjusting the pickups there. And like I said earlier, just using these tweezers and those pliers to manipulate that fossil bronze strip so that it springs into contact and, more importantly, stays into contact with the wheels when the 20 is running and going round corners, etc. Now, it took some doing. I was trying not to snap the fossil bronze strip. And then I put a little bit of oil from my pin dropper onto the bearings that are in the bogey side frames, as they are brass bearings. And a little bit of lubrication will help the axles turn around in them nicely and prevent friction. So all um, eight bearings were axled on this. All eight bearings were oiled. And then with a controller that I'm just testing to make sure all the pickups work. And that is the powertrain and motor bogey completely overhauled and restored to running order but here i am cleaning the wheel faces on the motor bogey the it is connected to power as you can see it is turning and there was quite a bit of dirt on a few of these wheels a lot of paint overspill there was a lot of black paint on one of the wheels so this was all cleaned off and they were given a last polishing up with the cotton with a mess so uh, this 20 it gives this 20 the best possible chance of uh, running when we put it on some O-gauge track later on. Here I am just putting some oil on the bearings that sit inside there on the motor bogey. And then once this is done, I add a small amount of Labelle 106 grease to the motor worm so that it will it will run through the drivetrain as both uh, sets of gears on this model are metal. The ones on the axle are made of brass. And uh, I don't quite know what the other ones are. I don't know if they're white metal or die cast. But a small amount of Labelle 106 there. Just a top, uh, just a little tiny top of oil on that, just to dilute it slightly, so that it spreads a lot easier. Just a little bit of oil on there, and the same on the other side. And then. I'm going to drill out the, there's two holes in the chassis where the handrails pass through, which were full of old resin, so these needed to be drilled out. And I think it's about time now, oh, I'm going to straighten that front handrail grip up as well. And I think it's about time now to glue the bonnet onto the chassis and reunite it with the cab. Now, again, using Gorilla Glue, I'm demonstrating where I'm going to put it here as I do do it off camera um, because this took both hands and I could have done with a third hand really doing this. But I'm going to glue it like that and then hold it in place for several minutes and make sure that the glue bond is correct. Make sure that the bonnet is lined up nice and straight and is true and that all the handrails and pipe work are in the correct holes and where they should be. So this is a dry run, but you'll see, you can see what it looks like. And you really don't need to see me uh, fiddling about with epoxy glue and toothpicks again. But that's what it's going to look like. And we are now coming to the final stages. And this rebuild hasn't been anywhere near as difficult as I first thought it would be. So this is several hours later, not the full 24, but only several. And you can see that it is now stuck fast and holding. So the next thing to go on is the cab roof. And again, 
I, I reprofiled the cab roof slightly as there was a big gap on test fitting. By running a small bead of this epoxy resin around the top of the cab roof. Again using a toothpick. And then the cab roof was held in place with finger pressure for another five minutes. Until uh, the glue had gone off sufficiently to hold it in place. And then the whole thing was set aside for several hours to fully cure before we put the bogies on. Now it may look a lot of glue on the video, but it's not really. It does spread out nicely and uh, there was no um, there was no incidents where the glue was squeegeeing out the side of anything. So I must have used just the right amount. And there we go, the cab roof is on, and this 20 is virtually done now. Well, rebuild-wise, anyway. A damp cotton bud removes any excess glue that squeezes its way out. And, as I said, I hold that in place for a good 5 to 10 minutes to make sure that the glue is correctly taken and that it's not going to fall off when I move it next. And that moves us on to the sixth day, which was the last day and the completion of the model. So it's been a full 24 hours, the bonnet and the cab roof are all now done and I can lift it up. Everything is solid, everything has dried correctly, everything is in line and we really are getting somewhere with this now and it is starting to look like a proper nice little model. As I said I do not know the manufacturer of this kit so if you do know please do leave a comment down below to tell me who makes it. The snap fasteners are also now glued in and I can push the bogey in. So we put the drive bogey under the cab and the trailing pickup bogey goes under the bonnet doors. And this is connected with that small electrical connector. Now that was very easily pulled apart. So what I did was connected it together and then ran a small amount of insulation tape around those two black pieces just so that they hold together correctly and don't um, disengage from each other unintentionally when the model is running and there it is for the first time in who knows how long it's sitting on its own bogies looking ready for work but now what i'm going to do is i'm going to do some touch up paint work to this model is there's a lot of um chips on the black paint and there's several on the green paint the head code discs are quite grubby so i might give them a spruce up and the silver paint from the window surrounds is also missing but it is overall a very nice looking rendition of a class 20. Yeah, I am actually really pleased with how this has come out. And I'm just going to show you there, for anybody in doubt whether those snap fasteners are strong enough, they are indeed strong enough to hold the model bogies together. So like I said, it's onto detail painting now and I actually enjoyed this part for a change. I went around the model firstly touching up all the black areas, especially on the bogies, battery boxes, etc. This was done using a triple zero brush and I just worked along, carefully concealing any of the chipped paintwork that had befallen the model in the boxes. As you can see, it was almost a complete bogey repaint, but it wasn't that bad, it was just the ends. And then rail match green was used to touch up the body shell. Now, initially, you might be able to show it on camera. This actually ended up being really, really light. But when I uh, when it dried, it was actually the same colour that was on the body, and it was an invisible join. So I painted all the joints where the glue was shown through, acting as a gap filler, and touched up any chips in the green paint around the cab ends, especially what had been damaged and lost over the years. Again, using the same triple zero brush as I did before and you can see there in the sped up footage all the little chips etc disappearing the um, green was also done on the top of the bonnet doors there just over where the glue had seeped out and then he there we go all away all them little chips away um, around that cab as I said this was this paint was um, rail match uh, British Railways diesel locomotive green and it was a it was an exact match to the paint that was already on the model it's interesting that this trash to track episode was about three and a half hours long before editing down to the 44 odd minutes that it is now 
And most of that footage was just me holding the model together because once I'd got hold of the parts, waiting for the glue to set, I couldn't turn the camera off. So it took some editing, but we got there. The next bits to do were the silver parts, the door handles, window frames. These were done with some Revel silver paint, again using the triple zero brush. And it was just to highlight and touch up all that silver paint that had been lost. White was next, so the fuel gauge was done. I'm just twisting the end of the paintbrush there. So the fuel gauge was painted white, as were the head code discs were given a clean coat of white. As on the real diesels, these were kept clean as they were identifying marks for train classification to signalmen. And then the roof. Now the roof I couldn't find a match for until I found this German grey um, XF63 there from Tamiya. And as you'll see, I've got a slightly larger brush now, but I repaint the entirety of the cab roof in a second. And when it's dry, this is an exact match for the grey that's on there. You can see no join and no touch-up marks. So I'm just going along the top of the roof now. It wasn't my intention to fully paint the cab roof. But the cab roof had suffered somewhat in the box. So just painting it by hand. Putting plenty of paint on them and using methodical easy strokes. I repainted the entire cab roof and once it's dry you can't see that it's been brush painted as you'll see in a moment. But yeah this Tamiya XF63, it was German grey. Um, I was really surprised that it was an exact match. I thought I was going to have to mix some paint up, but it was uh, it worked out well in that respect. So I know that's not everybody's favourite method of painting using a small brush like that, but it does come out all right, and it looks the part. And then the other bits on the roof were touched up around the exhaust ports, and I also put a black wash in the fan grill on the roof just to highlight it a little bit, as it had been painted grey. When I first received it. And that's it. That is the 20 done. All rebuilt. The glue is fully cured. The bogies have all been rebuilt. It works. The motor's been lubricated. Those snap fasteners work really well. The only unfortunate thing is I didn't have any aware to run it. And Trainsview only has a short O gauge test track. So that is where we are going to now take it to give it a spin. If you've got an engine you'd like to see featured on a future episode of Trash to Track, please email me at dansmodelrowers at gmail.com. We'll have a look again at sent over, and who knows, it may even feature in an episode all of its own. Now, to see this 20 run, it was, uh, it was really uh, satisfactory watching this run in the condition. Bearing in mind the condition in which we received it. But it, here it is on, like I said, that little bit of track they've got in trains for you as I really don't have anywhere else O-gauge to run it. But it runs really lovely and smooth, and it was quite powerful and quiet. And as you can see, it just looks like a 20. It's a really lovely looking model, this. And Steve actually collected it from the water shop and was very happy with the rebuild. And as, as am I, I think we've done a really good job. And it was nowhere near as daunting or as hard as I first imagined it would be when I opened that box of bits way back in the start of this video. Thank you for watching Trash to Track. Please like, share and subscribe. And I'll catch you again in the next video. Bye for now.